Okay, this is a little demonstration or a look at a, a linear spool valve. I just want to go over some of the things so that we can kind of speed things up. Um, this is a uh, single use valve, but um, the way it's designed with, with these flat surfaces on each side, you could theoretically stack up as many as you need to have operate as many different uh, components as you, as you would need. Um, the downside of this style is that you would have to maintain a seal among each of these flat surfaces uh, so that it wouldn't leak out. Um, but it does work to kind of go over the, some of the basics. All right. So we have our spool here which would be lever operated. The lever would pivot on this end at the bottom and then we would simply move this back and forth. At this end, and I've already removed it, there would be a cap go on here, and that cap is to hold against the, the, the from, from allowing it to push out. But it also works in conjunction with this spring to have a spring return, so when we move the lever from the left to the right, that the spring then, when you release the lever, the spring would push back to a neutral center position. And the same thing when you pull on the lever, because it can go both directions, the spring would center it back at, at that time. Um, we have our, we would have our inlet through the center, all right, and depending on which way we move the spool, the oil would flow either up and out one of our outlets, A or B, and then would return through the other outlet and then return to tank through here. If we move it in the opposite direction, the oil will go from the center up through A and return through B and return to tank through this outlet. All right, um, built into this one on each end of that spool, and I'm just going to rotate it around so we can read it, we actually have a pressure relief uh, built into it, into each side, and they're all, both equal 165. Um, that 165 is 165 bar. So um, if we look at the math, all right, 165 bar times 14.7 psi equals 2425 ps and a half psi. So that means that when oil is flowing out through here, if something happened where we were going over pressure, it would simply move this back and dump the oil into the return side and I'll take this out so we can have a look at it so there it is there this would stick into there oil acting on this would move that piston back if it was too high and would bleed off through here to the return and we have one on each side I don't know if the other one's not loose all right if we take the adapters out of the top and reinstall it back in here you can see that it's exposed to where the oil is flowing there all right, so I'll take that out. Um, the biggest thing I want to talk about on this is the spool itself. All right, and I'm going to bring this right out and set it over here so you can kind of see uh, where it goes. All right, uh, that is basically where it would ride right there. Now, I'm going to aim down here and I'm going to zoom in on this. Now, hopefully we'll get everything, keep everything in focus here. All right, uh, some of the things I want to go over are, I can get a pen. Are this. So, the, the raised portions here, 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 and here, and here, are referred to as lands. They are the lands of the spool. The, the portions here where it has been uh, material is machi machined away are referred to as the undercuts. All right, so as we move these in here, the oil flowing into this would be directed either to the right or the left and return out through the, the reservoir. So also built into around the, circ the circumference of these lands are these uh, other cuttings if you will and they're referred to as a metering notch the way that they work 
is that when the spool is moved linearly you'll see that that notch first of all starts with a very narrow area and as we move it more more of, a, of the opening is uncovered until we start uncovering the entire leading edge of of the valve now in this there are some where you can see where this one uh, here is, is is just uncovered and there isn't another one uncovered here yet until it has moved a little bit so what we end up with is a metering notch of two different lengths now in this valve there are four two long ones and two short ones on opposite sides of each other the purpose of the metering notch is to allow the the valve to to have a, a better control when when we're we're trying to feather it or or have a very small amount of oil flow move um, so if we didn't have that and we start uncovering that whole edge we would have a, a more of a, a faster reaction with my valve while I'm moving it so and that is the purpose of the of the metering notch now for these grooves that are, are machined in here these are very very shallow and and as I said earlier they go around the complete circumference of the lands they are what we use to provide a seal from say a high pressure area to a low pressure area and the way that we do that is we, we use the same principle we talked about when we look at um, at creating a restriction this has a very very uh, tight clearance this land between this and the bore on my on my valve um, so when I, I have high pressure here and it goes across a couple of things happen the high pressure goes in and it fills the first groove and it goes all the way around so that helps to um, float the 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 spool in the center of the valve so that there's oil all the way around it and we're not grinding on one side or the other but as the oil moves fills around there and moves past I'll go back down again as the oil goes around there and fills it um, because there's such a tight clearance between here and and the body of the of the, the valve that the pressure drops immensely but then we go from you know a relative maybe even a little uh, a, a low pressure here every time we cross a groove that pressure would continue to drop and that is what provides a seal from one say a high pressure area to a low pressure area is simply the number of grooves now there is a a seal um, built into uh, the end of the valve where, where it runs but again just this is just a a, a dust seal or a, a, to keep moisture from being dragged in with that spool um, between here and and oil leaking out the end is simply just another uh, pair of grooves all right one thing I want to do now is just kind of uh, quickly go over the number of lands and, and that has really no uh, nothing to really do with um, what style of valve it is uh, it's very hard and I'm going to spin this around now and hold it up to the camera and hopefully you can see that uh, you can see in this bore here all of the the divisions and that where that rides and it's almost impossible to say exactly where the 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 lands and and the and undercuts on this spool are going to line up with that. Um, we'll look at a, a schematic of of a similar spool set up in uh, and how the oil flows through it. 